Hello, thank you for watching and joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Where's the Beef? I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Beth and Katie to tell us about their recipes. So Katie, tell us about your beef recipe. Okay, so the recipe that I am sharing with you today is for steak bites and sweet potatoes. This has evolved from a recipe that I saw a while back on the internet that had a like steak and it was mixed with uh, baby Yukon gold potatoes. Took that recipe and I've messed with it a bunch. And so now it is mine. So steak bites and sweet potatoes. What you do to start out as you season your steak. I use sirloin for this. And I've been finding really good deals on sirloin at Meyer lately. So that's been really nice. Um, so you season it both sides with salt and pepper. And then just let it sit at room temperature like on the counter for about 10 minutes to rest. And then you cut it into cubes. And then you scrub and dry your sweet potatoes, like two small sweet potatoes, puncture them all over with a fork. I put them in the microwave for four minutes to get them soft. You could certainly bake them, but it's just so much quicker um, until they're tender. And then just sit those on the counter until they're cool enough to handle. And then you're going to um, cut those up into cubes as well. Then you heat a large cast iron skillet over medium high. Add a little bit of olive oil and some butter. Wait till the butter is melted. And then you add your sweet potatoes and rosemary, which is like my favorite part. I love the combination of sweet potatoes and rosemary, like that flavor combination. It's one of my favorites. So you add sweet potatoes, rosemary, oregano, salt, and pepper. Let that cook for like four minutes without moving it. So it's just like sitting in your cast iron pan. And then you stir in a whole bunch of chopped garlic and just stir that around for like mm, five or six minutes, but you want the potatoes to be getting like a little brown, a little crispy. So like you may need to turn the heat up a little bit for a minute or two to achieve that. Um, and then you remove the sweet potatoes from the pan, just put those on the side in a bowl and you put like two more tablespoons of butter in the ha in the pan and turn it up to high. The butter will melt in like a second. And then you throw in your steak pieces. Let those cook for like a minute, just undisturbed. And then stir them around for like a minute or two, depending on how done you want your steak. Uh, and then remove the skillet from the heat and you put the pot sweet potatoes back in, toss everything together and remove everything back again to the bowl, making sure that you scrape out the delicious garlic and spices that are all stuck to the cast iron pan. And then you top the whole thing with fresh parsley. I have a picture of it. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it is certainly tasty and it comes together very, very quickly. This is really easy because it's like a one pan meal, basically. You can do it on a weeknight. Night. I've done this on a weekday lunch so it's just very versatile and i really like it yeah sounds simple it sounds like the kind of thing you could make when you see like a steak on on sale you know at the 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 reduced pile like just for okay. something to do with one steak for two people right Oh yeah, yeah. I we usually cook one steak for two people, but yeah, this definitely stretches it a little bit too. And do you just eat it like do you eat it out of like with a fork out of a bowl or like is that how you serve it? Yeah, I I don't know if I mentioned that I have a picture. Oh yeah, I did, but I, the picture that I have is of it just like in a bowl. That's how I ate it. Um I've been known to put some steak sauce in a little cup on the side as well. Um Yum. Yeah, really you know what good. I'm thinking? A little like sour cream with a little horseradish. Yeah, that would also be very, very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds super great. I love easy recipes like that too, because, you know, it's preparing yeah. red meat can be so daunting to me. And when 
you know, trying to get it perfectly done and all that. And this just seems pretty foolproof, you know? That's exactly right. I feel the same way. So yeah, this one's really easy. Okay, Beth, tell us about where your beef is. My beef <laughs> um, is right here. And it's uh, actually, I pivoted um, from make, I had a kind of complicated layered um, meatloaf that I've made before with different elements in it, but forget that I didn't do it because when we cooked our skillet burgers from this uh, cookbook that we got for our wedding um, in 1986, uh, the skillet burger recipe is basically a sloppy joe. And we had it for dinner. And I was like, you know what? This, it just, even the smell, it just brought me back to something we made probably as a young couple, but then also with the kids uh, growing up. So anyway, it's a pound of ground beef, cup of chopped onion, half a cup of chopped celery, 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, two tablespoons of quick cooking rolled oats, um, which is kind of unusual, but for this recipe, it, it just is a thickener, um, tablespoon of brown sugar, teaspoon of Worcestershire. We, pr I doubt we measure a half teaspoon of chili powder. That seems not like enough dash or more of hot pepper sauce. And basically, you know, you cook it up and this calls for 14 to 16 hamburger buns. I don't know about that, but we did make them as sliders. So we got the Hawaiian buns and put it on there and then put cheese and put it in the oven. It was, it was really, really good. And it was great for leftovers. So yeah, it was a very, it was super comforting. I just love the smell. And I, I told Elizabeth, it could have been my blast from the past recipe, but um, anyway, skillet burgers. Yeah. Yum. Sounds delicious and easy. I mean, that's, do you, um, form them into patties or do you just kind of no no it's just like it's just like sloppy joe like, okay yeah yep. or kind of like a manwich kind of but <laughs> man yeah. no yeah that sounds good i love sloppy joes and that sounds like a great like party food too so yeah. um yeah that's awesome thank you all right well uh who's the uh elizabeth Me. you're <laughs> the one i know okay. you okay <laughs> so this was a good challenge for me. I didn't want to use ground beef, even though that was my first inclination. I wanted to try to do something else. So I found a recipe for orange beef is what it's called. And this did not go very well for me, but anyway, it's partly my fault, partly just, it wasn't, it was, there was a lot happening at once, you know? And I think if you made this recipe a lot, you would get used to it, but it was kind of hard for me. So basically you make it the sauce first. So you're putting um, a tablespoon of neutral oil, um, a one and a half inch piece of fresh ginger minced and peeled, um, a seeded and minced jalapeno pepper, two tablespoons of orange zest, plus the juice of one whole orange, three garlic cloves peeled and minced, a quarter cup of light brown sugar, a quarter cup of rice vinegar and a quarter cup of soy sauce all in a saucepan. You're letting it cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until it thickens. Um, and then you have um, a boneless ribeye steak that you um, cut into one inch pieces and you put in a bowl with a large egg white, a tablespoon of cornstarch and some salt. So that's kind of, apparently this is called like you're trying to velvet the beef. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. So then you, you cook, you, after that sits for a few minutes, you put the beef in a pan with some more oil and, um, you, sorry, I'm reading the recipe here. Um, and you kind of just let it sit for about a minute and a half to kind of sear. And then you stir it a little bit for like three minutes total. That's for medium rare. I did it for a little longer because I'm paranoid. Um, and you throw the white pieces of scallion into the pan as well and stir those up with it. And then it called for some chilies that I couldn't find. So I just put in some red pepper flakes. Um, so then you pour the sauce that you've made into the pan and you're supposed to like, let it kind of thicken more. 
And this was like not happening for me. So I threw some cornstarch in there to help it, but I think I overdid it because again, I got really thick. So I was like, oh, oh no. Um, oh, the other thing was I was trying to supplement this because I didn't get a very big ribeye because it's, they're expensive. So I actually threw in some mushrooms too. Supplementing, and I really like mushrooms. So anyway, then you serve it over rice and you put the green parts of the scallions on top. And it was, it tasted really good. I really liked the orange flavor. That was really cool. I think next time I might even add like more orange zest, um, but it was just a lot of moving parts and I did struggle with the sauce. So if I were to make it again, you know, I think I need to finesse that a little with maybe adding a small bit of cornstarch, but it just got, you know, it was thin and then it was way too thick. And so it just didn't come together for me, but the flavors were great. And, um, I would make this again and, and give it another try. Um, I have a photo here. You can see it as with Katie's, like, uh, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but you can see what it looks like over the rice and with the scallions. And, um, yeah, that was my kind of experiment, but I was running around the kitchen chopping and all that. So anyway, it was fun. Well, good for you for trying something new. I mean, that's great. And, you know, you don't come away from it empty either. You'll return to the recipe. And it sounds good. I've never had orange beef before, only orange chicken. And I love orange chicken. So I'm like, that sounds really tasty. Yeah. Yeah, it does sound tasty. I get what you mean, though, especially when the sauce isn't doing it. And and honestly, my cooking is always like that, running <laughs> around. I mean, the kitchen's a disaster. I don't know. It's just, I, you know, yeah, it's. I have to admit something. Every time I start to cook, I I know the concept of mise en place or mise en, you know, putting everything in. And I kind of do that, but I also will be like, well, you know, I'll just get a spoon from this and a spoon from this. And I don't know. It's just, I'm, I'm a sloppy one. It's funny because in the comment section of this recipe, a lot of people commented like this recipe will go great if you have your mise en place all good to go, you know? And I did kind of try to do that. Like I chopped everything, but I don't know when there's moving parts and you haven't done something before, you know, it's just, it's always tough. So yeah. And that's what we're here for. And that's, yeah, that's why, that's why we're here. So, okay. Well, we, if we don't have any other comments, I will take us out and say, thank you for watching recipe share and be sure to click the link below at the event page on AADL.org to find the recipes we talked about and do feel free to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when our theme is blast from the past. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe with recipe share.